Okay, so we are just about to get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our speaker for this evening. Uh, so Kate McKenzie, she is our newest senior librarian here at the Genealogy Center. She has a bachelor's in science in library informatics from Northern Kentucky University. In 2020, she received her certificate in geological research from Boston University, and she received her master's in library information science from Kent State in 2022. So her research, you know, wheelhouse includes Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, Ukraine, Eastern Europe, but she is a really, you know, great librarian and we are super happy to have her and I'm super happy for this presentation. So just as a final reminder before I disappear, use the Q&A button for questions and then the chat button for conversation. So I'm gonna let Kate go ahead and get started. All right, so thank you again for joining us today for this intro to Ohio genealogy research. So we're going to explore various records and repositories and talk about some tips and tricks that you might be able to use when searching for your Ohio ancestors. So um, a little bit of what we'll be talking about today, uh, we'll discuss vital probate and cemetery records. Um, immigration and naturalization records at the state and local level and resources that we have here at the Genealogy Center as well. So I just wanted to provide a brief bit of historical information before getting into the records. So Ohio became a state in 1803 and before statehood dating way back to the 1600s, there were Native American tribes living in Ohio. So this included the Delaware, the Shawnee, the Mingo, Miami, and a couple of others as well. And after the um, Northwest Territory was established, there were thousands of settlers that came to the area. And settlers that came before statehood were most often from states like Pennsylvania, New York, Maryland, and other Eastern states. So by the middle part of the 19th century, there were immigrants settling in Ohio from, from Germany, Ireland, and England mostly. Um, and then in the later part of the 1800s, many people came over from Scotland, Wales, Canada, England, and France. Um, Germans tended to settle more in the southern part of the state, and the Irish would often choose to settle within cities or larger, larger communities. Um, groups such as Italians and immigrants from Eastern Europe settled primarily in Northeast Ohio um, in areas around Cleveland. And there were also quite a large number of Norwegian settlements along the area of Lake Erie as well. So now we'll dive in a little bit and start with vital records. So first I wanted to mention that Ohio is considered an open record state. And basically this means that pretty much anyone can um, request public records in Ohio, and state law requires public offices to have a policy in place for responding to these public records requests. So statewide registration for birth records in Ohio began in 1908, and some of the earliest records can date back to about 1867, but these records are incomplete. For marriages, um, 1949 marks when statewide registration began. So records after this date can be obtained from the Department of Vital Statistics, but marriage records um, generally date back to county formation for the particular area where you're researching. And then for deaths, um, like birth records, some of the earliest can date back to the late 1860s, but statewide registration didn't begin until 1908. Um, and I also wanted to include divorce records here as well. So for divorces before 1949, these were recorded with the county clerk of court's office where the divorce was granted. And then for divorces after 1949, those are kept with the court of common pleas. And along with vital records, I also wanted to mention adoptions. So effective March 2015, adult adoptees or their lineal descendants can submit an application to the Ohio Department of Health for their adoption file. So adult lineal descendants would include people like children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. And if the adoptee is older than 18, but they're younger than 21, the adoptive parents can also request the 
adopt the adoption file on their behalf. Um, so the application is not able to be um, submitted online and you're not able to obtain it in person in the office on the same day. So you do have to mail in the required documentation with payment and then um, the office will verify and research your request and um, you can you should be able to to receive those copies of the adoption file and those will um, those will be mailed to you within about a month. So there are a number of indexes available for Ohio births and some of those databases are listed here. So for births after 1908, you can order those certificates from the county of birth or from the Ohio Department of Health. And the main place to look is the Ohio birth index that spans from 1908 to 1998. Um, so depending on the year of birth, you can obtain the certificate, uh, the certificate number, the county uh, where the child was born and the names of the parents from the index. And Family Search also has a collection of Ohio County births that includes both the indexes, the index information, and images of some of those certificates. So navigating to that screen in Family Search, um, you can keyword search an individual's name, and you can also browse to see what records are available for various counties. So I'll click browse the images there at the left where that arrow is pointing. And then, um, so it'll prompt you to select a county from there. So I selected Claremont. And then you can view the record type and the date ranges that are available. So for this county, the earliest birth registers available here are from 1856 and 57. Um, and they also have delayed births that go up to 1963. So if somebody was born in 1905, um, when birth certificates weren't weren't mandated and they needed one, this is where you might find those records. And again, these have been indexed, so they are keyword searchable, but this is just a way to, to see what's available for each, each county within the state in this collection. There are a few databases that you can check for marriage records, um, Ancestry, MyHeritage, Find My Past, uh, family search. So it's always best to exhaust the online the online sources first. Um, but maybe the names have been badly misspelled or they haven't been indexed well. So if you don't have luck there, you can always check the family search catalog for the county that you're researching, and um, you can browse the film. So you might be able to locate the record that way. And you can also contact the county probate court where the marriage took place. And sometimes you can search um, the marriage records on the county, on the probate court's website. Um, so it'll depend on the, on the particular court and the time period of the record that you're looking for. Um, so you, you may be able to view the image of the record or just the indexed information and then go from there to obtain the record. And again, for Ohio marriages, um, marriage records usually begin at the formation of the county. And then for Ohio death records, Family Search will be the first place to go. So there's a collection of index deaths and burials listed there in that first bullet point. Um, but the Ohio County death records from 1840 to 2001 and 1908 um, to 1953, that's where you'll go to locate the images of the records. And the dates that are available do vary by county. Um, so lastly, if you go to the Ohio History Connection, if you go to their website, they have an index of death records that you can order directly, directly from the site. And their index includes more recent deaths as well. So you can order death certificates from 1913 to 1944 and deaths that span from 1954 to 1970, which is where that family search collection leaves off. And then there at the right is just a standard Ohio death certificate that you might find. Um, this one's for one of my ancestors, a second great grandmother. Um, so her name was Mary Schmid. So this, this certificate has a lot of good information in it. Um, the address where she was living, her age at death, which was 46, the cause of death, which was a stroke. Um, the names of her parents are, are there, August and Margaret. 
and her place of burial, which was St. Joseph's Old Cemetery. And it's also a good idea to investigate and to see what might be available specifically for the city or the town that you're researching, because some cities did retain good vital records before the state required registration. So Cincinnati, for example, has a, um, a searchable collection of births and death records that span from 1865 to 1912. And these are available on the website for the University of Cincinnati Rare Books Library. And we'll talk a little bit more about them later. Um, but at the right are records for a couple of my ancestors. So on the top is a death record for George Bronner. And it states his age, his date at death, or date of death, um, the address where he was from, which was Germany, and the cause of death, which was dropsy of the heart or heart failure. Um, it also states the cemetery where he's buried. And then for that birth record below it, um, it states the name of the child, the birth date, the address, his parents and their birthplaces, and his father's occupation. And it also lists the name of the doctor who was present at the birth. And all of these, um, these birth and death records were recorded on note cards a couple decades ago. And this was to preserve the information that was uh, written in original ledger books. So these are considered to be the official birth and death records for Cincinnati for this time period. So this is just an example of um, an alternate source or another place that you can look to check for vital records. Um, so I know for Cuyahoga County, there's a collection of birth returns available on Hold 3. So it's always good to do, to do a little investigating and to check um, places like the Family Search Wiki um, for additional sources for records in the county where your where your ancestors were living. And this is also um, linked in the handout. So for Ohio probate records, these were usually kept beginning at the formation of the county. And then um, until 1952, they were kept with the courts of common, common pleas. And then um, after, then separate probate courts were established. And that's where you can find the records after 1852. So many wills and probate records are available on FamilySearch and on Ancestry. And there is a collection of wills and probate records that spans from 1789 to 1996. And the, the content and the time period um, will vary by county. So when looking for these records, it's always good to keep things like courthouse fires in mind. So there are a number of Ohio counties that have suffered, suffered courthouse fires and that has destroyed many records. Um, for example, Hamilton County had three. So there was a courthouse fire in 1814. There was one in 1849. And the last one in 1884 was the one that destroyed the most records. So one of the places that you can check is on the Family Search Wiki page for Ohio probate records. And there's a listing there of some of the counties that have experienced courthouse fires. So um, that's a good place to look to see whether or not that might uh, pertain to the county that you're researching. And it's also a good idea to check the Family Search catalog and search for the county um, where your ancestor was to make sure that you don't miss any probate collections or indexes listed there. And if you're not finding the records that you're looking for um, within those databases, some probate records or some probate courts have the records available on their website. So using Hamilton County as an example, again, um, if you navigate to their site, you can find wills spanning from 1791 to 1973, and they have many additional records on there as well. Um, but if you look there at the top, um, they have a little blurb about their collection of will index books. So it's alphabetical, and once you find your person listed in the index, then you can plug in the volume number and the page number, and um, you'll plug that in there at the bottom to, uh, to gain access, to gain digital access to, to that person's will. And they also 
provide an example of an estate docket sheet um, that you might find and they've annotated it. So just shows where you can find, find various things like the volume and page number and the case number. Um, if the probate court in the county where you're researching does not have digitized wills, you can contact them directly to, to try to obtain those records. Religious records are a great substitute when birth, marriage, and death um, records may not be available for a certain time period or area. So um, we'll begin with, with Protestant records. And I've listed a few of the denominations here that have historically been the most prominent within Ohio. So um, it's a good idea to, to check with the church itself first for records, if that's possible. And I did want to highlight just a few, um, a few specific things. So for United Methodist records, there's an interesting collection on family search of Methodist ministers cards for all Ohio conferences. So these will contain the minister's name and their assignments over the years. Um, the United Methodist Historical Society of Ohio, they're located in Ohio Wesleyan University. And they hold collections for both the East and West conferences of the Methodist Church in Ohio. And their website also has some, some good information regarding su suggestions for research. Um, there are several databases of Lutheran records available. So there are a couple listed here um, and they're linked on the handout. Um, and those are available on Ancestry. And then, for Presbyterian records, there's a collection on ancestry that spans from um, 1701 to 1970. So that might be a good place to start. And um, there's also a collection on family search. It's the inventory of the Church Archives of Ohio Presbyterian Churches. And so um, that was a project of the Works Progress Administration in the 1930s. And it's not indexed, so you do have to page through to find the church that you're looking for, but it is organized alphabetically by county. Um, so you'll click on the little camera icon down there um, where the arrow is pointing to browse through the images. And then on the right is an example um, from one of those pages. So this example is from the Hungarian Presbyterian Church in Belmont County, Ohio. And this particular church is no longer active, but this tells me about the history of the church, when it was organized. Um, it notes that the present structure had been dedicated in 1924, and it gives the name of the first minister where he went to school, which was in Budapest, and then it notes the records in their possession, um, their meeting minutes, baptisms, marriages, and then some other miscellaneous records. Uh, and it also tells where the records were located. So some of their records were at the home of Louis Jacobs, who was the church secretary at the time. And then other records were at the home of Mrs. Mike Gregley in St. Clairsville. So these um, church record surveys can give you some good clues about your ancestor's church, the history of it, and the state of their records and where those records were located at the time of this project. And then going back to this slide, I also wanted to mention Episcopal records. So there are two Episcopal dioceses in Ohio. Um, the Episcopal Diocese of Ohio covers the northern part of the state, and the Episcopal Diocese of Southern Ohio covers the southern part of the state. So you can contact um, each of the dioceses to, to learn more about their archival holdings and to request records. So historically, Ohio has also had a very large Catholic population. So the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, um, that's the ecclesiastical province in which five other dioceses fall under. So these are the dioceses of Cleveland, Columbus, Steubenville, Toledo, and Youngstown. Um, and all of these dioceses, with the exception of Youngstown, have archival departments that you can contact to request sacramental records, such as baptisms, or uh, marriages. So for most of them, there'll be a records request form that you can submit on their website in order to obtain the records. And usually there is um, a small fee associated with that. 
Um, for the Diocese of Youngstown, their records are in the care of Kent State University. So if you're wanting to view a record from that diocese, you would have to contact the Diocese Chancery Office and obtain permission from them. Um, the records are located in an off-site um, climate-controlled facility owned by Kent State. So you'd have to contact them a few weeks in advance and you have to show special collection staff that um, you've received written permission from the diocese to view the records. So a couple of Ohio dioceses have partnered with Find My Past, um, and this includes the Archdiocese of Cincinnati and the Diocese of Toledo. So if you have ancestors who um, were Catholic, who went to par parishes in either of these dioceses, that'll be the first place to look. Um, and the Find My Past database is available on site here at the Genealogy Center. Um, so the Archdiocese of Cincinnati records Unfind My Past are indexed, so you can keyword search those. The ones for Toledo are not indexed, um, but you can browse the records pretty easily by the name of the church. So um, there at the bottom is an example of a record that you might locate within the Archdiocese of Cincinnati records in Find My Past. So this is a record of a marriage between um, John Wardlow and Bridget McCloy. And this marriage took place at St. Mary's Church in Brown County, Ohio in 1901. So we have um, Find My Past for the Diocese of Toledo and the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. And there are archival departments, um, archival offices for, for the other dioceses that can be contacted for records. But um, before you contact the archives for, um, for any uh, religious institution, whether it's Catholic or Protestant, um, it's always best to check within other resources first, like the Family Search Catalog, um, to search for records that you might be able to find there. So I searched for Toledo, Lucas County, Ohio in the catalog. And if you look here under church records, there are 66 results that pop up. So these are search or these are um, church records that might not be indexed, but they are fully browsable on Family Search. So the first few that popped up there are for uh, Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church in Toledo. Then there's St. John's Lutheran Church, um, Monroe Street United Methodist, and so on. So you can do this same search for Youngstown, Cleveland, or for any city or county that you're researching and see what might be available there um, as far as church records and other types of records. Um, checking with the local library or historical society is um, always a good idea too because many will have church records available on microfilm or um, indexes that are available in book form. Another great resource is the Catholic News Archive. So this is a free website which has a number of historic Catholic publications. So you can search by title, by date, or by diocese. So the two publications that they have for Ohio are the Catholic Columbian, which was a publication of the Diocese of Columbus, and they also have the Catholic Telegraph, which was a publication of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. So this is just an example of what you might find. Um, this is a page from the Catholic Telegraph from March 1901, and it talks about a Silver Jubilee celebration for a local priest. So you can find obituaries, announcements, and um, much more in there in those, um, those editions. So they often included news about nearby cities and dioceses as well. So these publications might be worth checking out, even if your ancestor did not belong to a church in that diocese, um, but belong to, maybe they belong to a nearby diocese or um, and lived on the border. So um, that can be a good place to check as well. So now we'll move into newspapers and newspapers can play a key role in your um, genealogy research. So you can use them to locate obituaries, 
birth and marriage announcements, and many other articles related to the lives of your ancestors. So newspapers.com and newspaper archive are two of the largest databases, both of which are available on site here at the Genealogy Center. Um, newspaper archive tends to have more of the smaller community newspapers and newspapers.com tends to have many of the larger publications. So um, they're both great places to check and Chronicling America, the Ohio Memory Project and the online historic newspaper site are also good places to check out. Um, those are good for some of the smaller newspapers as well, and these are also linked in the handout. So this is what the Ohio section of the online historic newspaper site looks like. And this information here was compiled by an individual, and they included the name of the paper, the range of dates that are covered, and um, where you can find it and whether or not there's a cost associated with accessing it. So for the first entry there, um, that's for the community post in Auglaes County, which is covered from 1965 to 2013. And the, the um, digital form is linked there at the right, and it's made available by the Minster Historical Society and Museum. Um, there are also several papers made available through the Google News News Archive, um, like Cuyahoga County's Advertiser listed there. Um, so this can be a helpful resource. And if you're not finding the newspaper that you're looking for through through these databases, checking with the local library or historical society will be the next best option. There's also the Ohio History Connection, and they hold the largest individual collection of Ohio newspapers on microfilm. So moving on to naturalizations, prior to 1906, there were no centralized naturalization records. So in the first half of the 1800s, the Court of Common Pleas had authority over naturalizations, and then in 1851, that switched over to the probate court. Um, in 1906, that's when the federal government began regulating the naturalization process. Um, and that uh, that year, uh, there was the formation of what was then called the Bureau of Immigration and Naturalization. So from about 1906, through the 1920s, the, the um, handling of naturalizations in Ohio kind of flipped back to the Court of Common Pleas, and it stayed there until the U.S. District Courts fully took over. So many counties probably still have um, physical copies of their naturalization records, and other counties may have transferred them to various archives. So. Many of these naturalizations can be found within the Family Search catalog, and there are indexes for each of the, the divisions, Southern, Western, Eastern, and Northern. And there's a collection of Ohio naturalizations that spans from 1800 to 1977. So that includes index, the index and the images. And that collection is available on Family Search and through American Ancestors. And on this page here, you can see um, some of the collections and, and where they're from. Um, there's the Northern District Court, the Southern District Court. And then under a few of them, um, you'll see that they came from the National Archives at Chicago. So they hold some of the Ohio naturalizations for the Northern and Southern District Courts. So that's another repository that you can contact. But the Family Search catalog is a great place to, to start browsing for those records for your ancestors. And then um, moving to cemetery records, when searching for, for information related to cemeteries or burial records, um, Find a grave and billion graves, those are usually the first places to go when searching for where your ancestor may have been buried. Um, if there's a cemetery associ association or cemetery office, contacting them directly will be another way to locate those internment records. And sometimes these, these, contain, these can contain valuable information. Um, 
such as the name, the names of the individual's parents when other records might not have that information. So um, the Ohio Genealogical Society, um, they may also be a valuable tool for locating cemetery information. Um, OGS and many of its member chapters locate and they transcribe that cemetery information. So checking the family search catalog for cemetery records is always a good idea as well. And you'll find collections for a variety of places around Ohio. And this screenshot just shows a listing of cemetery records available for Chillicothe, Ohio. So local libraries and historical societies can play an important part in your genealogy research. And this is the homepage for the Ohio History Connection. So they were previously known as the Ohio Historical Society. And so you can click that research link there at the top right on their website. And it'll take you to this nice little picture of their library and you'll scroll down and you'll see these pink links where you can search the, ca search the catalog and then um, the death certificate index. They also have research guides. So those may be helpful to check out first before, before jumping into the catalog. Um, and their research guides, they include topics like adoption and guardianship records. Um, there's one for land research, military records, uh, prison records. So there's some really good Good information in those. Um, and then as far as the prison records, they also have an incarceration index. So this index contains Bertillon cards for inmates. So that was a system that was used before fingerprinting was implemented for, for inmates. And they have cards from the, the, the prisoners admitted between 1888 and then um, ending in 1923, and those cards are from the Ohio Penitentiary and the Ohio Reformatory. So that's that's one of the unique collections at the Ohio History Connection. And then I just wanted to provide an example of one of their research guides. So this is the one for adoptions, and it provides a timeline of um, timeline and history of adoption and guardianship in Ohio. And there is a section relating to the materials um, that the Ohio History Connection holds. And there's also a section of um, uh, materials that they don't hold. So that can be just as helpful because it can provide you with ideas about where you might wanna look next. Another place to visit is the website of the Ohio Genealogical Society. So they are the largest state Genealogical Society, and there are a lot of great resources available on their site. Um, they do have some items like digitized books and manuscripts that are behind a member paywall, but you can still browse their holdings and, and view some resources for free. And they have a page that looks like this, Cemetery Research Tools. And then um, if you scroll down on that page, there are a couple of really helpful features. So first is um, a document related to cemetery laws. So these were extracted from the Ohio Revised Code. Um, they put all the cemetery laws in one place to make it really easy to, to look at those. And there's information on cemetery uh, preservation. There is a key to abbreviations that you might find on tombstones. And then there's a listing of cemetery vertical files. So the vertical files, those would be individual cemetery transcriptions and manuscript form that have been submitted to the OJS library. And there's also a free searchable database of Ohio cemetery locations and a list of holdings that were used in the creation of that. So we've mentioned places like local libraries and historical societies. Um, the Ohio History Connection and OGS, but I also wanted to mention the value of other archives like university special collections departments. So the six organizations listed here, these are part of the Ohio Network of American History Research Centers. 
And this is the regional archive system for Ohio that's overseen by the Ohio History Connection. So um, it currently includes four universities and then two of Ohio's largest historical organizations. So there's the University of Akron, the University of Cincinnati, Western Reserve Historical Society in Cleveland, Wright State in Dayton, and the Youngstown Historical Center of Industry and Labor. So these organizations all house government records um, from counties and their surrounding areas. So these are a couple of screenshots here from Wright State Special Collections and Archives webpage. And on their um, site under genealogy resources, they state that they maintain a variety of records for the 11 counties surrounding, surrounding the university. And then they list out the county names. So they have books, maps, and manuscript collections. And those document the um, cultural and social growth within the Miami Valley region. In their collection, they also have items like children's home records for many of the counties, cemetery inscriptions, church records, um, funeral home records, there are historic newspapers. So um, just to name a little bit of what's available there. So that's just an example, but I would encourage you to visit the website for, for the university archives or the institution around the area that you're researching in Ohio because you might come across some records that could be really beneficial to your research. And although these institutions are the ones that are currently listed as part of the archive system, you don't have to limit it to just those. So I mentioned Kent State previously because they hold the um, diocesan records for Youngstown, but they also have a lot of great manuscript collections. So a lot of them do relate specifically to faculty papers and university history, but they also have collections of union records, local union records, like um, those from the um, United Brotherhood of Carpenters and from the United Steel Workers of America. So, um, and a number of other local unions that had, that had a presence in that area. So I'd recommend digging into university special collections to see what what might what you might find that could really benefit your research. So before we talk about um, the Genealogy Center and how it can assist with your research, I wanted to talk about uh, maps and specifically the Ohio Memory Project. So I mentioned um, the Ohio Memory Project a few slides ago um, and how it can be a helpful resource for newspapers, but it's great for many other things as well, um, including digital maps. So maps are a great tool for genealogy and they can provide um, really good insights into how and where people lived. So the Ohio Memory Project, they, their site can be accessed at ohiomemory.org. And that's a collaboration of the Ohio History Connection and the State Library. And on the homepage there, there are a number of ways that you can begin your search. So you can browse contributors. Um, there are a number of libraries and organizations that contribute to the digital collections there. So there's the Akron Summit Public Library, the Adams County Historical Society, um, the Athenaeum of Ohio, Ashland University, and a number of others. So. You can browse to, to see the full list and to see what each organization has contributed. And you can also browse uh, places, subjects, or time periods, or you can use the search bar there um, to, to keyword search the collection. So if I wanted to find some maps of Zanesville, I might start just with a simple keyword search for, for Zanesville maps. So I get a number of results and then you can further refine your search by collection, format, subject. So I'll click on this 1936 map. And then 
From there, you can zoom in and out on the map. You can print it and save the image. And then when you scroll down, you can view the metadata um, associated with the item. So this particular map was submitted to the Ohio Memory Project by the Ohio History Connection. And the description indicates that it's a photograph of a map of Zanesville and was created by the Ohio Writers Program of the Works Progress Administration. And it was for possible use in the Ohio Guide. So there are lots of great maps and information that you can find there. And then along with the maps, you can also explore many photographs within the various collections um, in the Ohio Memory Project database. So the photographs pictured here are from the collection of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. <clears throat> and then continuing on um, with maps, um, Sanborn fire insurance maps can be another valuable resource for your genealogy research. And these maps are detailed depictions of US cities and towns, and they were created in the 19th and 20th centuries. And the purpose was to assist insurance companies in determining the fire hazards um, that were associated with various properties and, and buildings. So a lot of these are available for free on the Library of Congress's website. And um, this one that's pictured is for Cincinnati and it's dated 1891. So there are usually several dates available per town and the dates that are available, um, they, it'll, it'll just depend on that particular town. Um, for larger cities like Cincinnati, you'll find that for each edition, it'll be in several volumes. So you can take a look at the various maps over the years and compare properties and see how the property has changed. So these are a great tool for doing, doing property or house research. And also just to reflect on what the town looked like during the time that your ancestors lived there. So you'll wanna have an address of a property in mind when, when using the Sanborn maps. And it could be an address that you found with a census record or a draft card, um, or maybe it was mentioned in a newspaper clipping. So it could be the address of a business. Um, so with that, the next step would be to look at the index. And um, usually you'll wanna start with the map that's most recent and then work your way back. So the index pages for the Sanborn maps are usually at the very beginning or very end of the, the um, digital collection on the Library of Congress. So in this case, it was at the end and it's pictured on the right here. So there's the full list of street names and then a zoomed in um, section for the letter A. So if I was going to research Abigail Street and I wanted to know what, what was at um, 9 Ab Ab Abigail Street in 1891, this um, tells me that um, she 28, that's where I'll find um, the addresses for Abigail between number one and number 84. So this is the image of sheet number 28. And then there's a zoomed in view at the right. So the arrow is pointing to the address where um, the address that we were looking for. So nine Abigail, um, and then it might be hard to see, but it was um, listed there as a bakery. So there are Sanborn map legends available that, that you can use to identify the various symbols and colors. And it'll tell you um, the characteristics of the property that you're looking at. So this is an 1891 map. So if I was researching the property, I could continue to, to look at earlier maps or I could look at the later maps to see how the property evolved over time. Um, in this case, I know that, that Abigail Street turned into East 12th Street. So um, that would be where I would look to find 
um, to find additional information. And each each Sanborn map will provide you with clues about your your ancestors' home or their business or whichever property that you're researching. So. Um, again, they can just provide great insights into what the neighborhood looked like at the time and um, how your ancestor might have viewed the community around them. So next, we'll talk about the Genealogy Center um, and how it can assist with your Ohio research. Uh, before we um, dive into the catalog, a great place to start might be with our Pathfinder for Ohio. So you can find that by clicking on the, the uh, Pathfinders link there at the top of our website. And then um, this is the Pathfinder for Ohio. This is what it looks like. So these contain um, a selective list of books that you might find helpful for research um, related to the state. So there are a list of materials related to cemetery records, land records, um, there's court and military, uh, periodicals, and, and more. So that's a good place to check. And then after um, looking at that, we can head over to the catalog here. So I did a search for books related to Chillicothe, Ohio. And after you click that purple find button at the top, um, You'll want to filter your results by branch at the left, and you'll click genealogy. And then you can start to explore and see which materials in our collection might be most helpful related to your um, Ohio research. So back here on our Genealogy Center homepage, um, you'll click that green button for our resources. And so the first place to check is in our free databases. So these are databases that you can access at no cost uh, from anywhere. So we'll talk about a few here today, but we always encourage you to visit the Genealogy Center's website, and there you can explore the depth of resources that, that are available there. So one of the options, um, that you'll have here is um, a database called Other States Resources, which contains resources for states outside of Indiana. So there are some general resources there at the left, and then it's organized alphabetically by state. So if we go down to Ohio, um, we'll have some statewide resources there at the top that you can explore, and then, um, and then it'll be alphabetical by county, starting with Adams. Another database that might be helpful to your Ohio research um, is our microtext or our microfilm catalog. So there are a couple of ways that you can search. You can search by state, by county, or by type of record, um, like newspapers or city directories. So I did a search by county and went with Franklin County, Ohio. And we have a number of records available for this county, including um, there's the Free American Newspaper, um, there are cemetery records, and Franklin County Land Office records. And then the last free database that we'll cover today is PERSI, our Periodical Source Index. So within this database, we have more than 3 million citations to genealogy and local history periodicals. So like with the microtext catalog, there are a few ways you can search. You can search by surname, by location, or if you know um, the specific article that you're looking for, you can search by, by article title. So again, I'm going to search by location, and I um, stuck with my Hamilton County example. So when you do that, you're taken to this page where you can view various categories. And then in the right-hand column, you can see how many articles are available in each category. So you could explore articles related to church records in Hamilton County or court records or maps. So there, there are a lot of options here, and I'm going to pick cemeteries. So um, when I do this, 
um, the results are organized alphabetically. So my first few results include an article about um, abandoned graveyards and then Anderson and Columbia townships. Um, but if there's a certain cemetery or a certain topic that I'm looking for, I can type in some keywords in the small search box there at the top. So if I was looking for um, items related to the new St. Joe Cemetery in Cincinnati, I type that in and then I get a couple of results. So one of which is finding Irish folks in St. Joseph New Cemetery. And that was a publication in the Tracer Periodical um, and that's published by the Hamilton County chapter of OGS. So from there, you can take the call number and you can view the periodical in person at the Genealogy Center, or you can submit a copy request for the article. Um, so that brings us to the end. And now we'll have some time if there are any questions. There are questions. <laughs> So the first question someone was asking, are there records available of licensed peddlers in Ross County, Ohio in the 1850s? Very specific. Um, so I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure about that. Um, usually, that's not something that I've researched before. Um, usually something like that, if it's survived all of this time, it's gonna live within the clerk report because that's where they would have had to file it. So if you can't, find it online, contact them because they're going to be kind of unique, kind of weird. Mm -hmm. So contact them. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Um, so what are your thoughts uh, about finding records available for old family cemeteries that are now located on private farms? This person was told by a historical society mm -hmm. in Ohio that they could just be plowed over. Um, I would probably recommend first exploring the resources on the OGS website. Um, I would kind of look there to see, to see if the cemetery is maybe listed in their database. Um, and I know they have, um, some resources related to, to, um, cemetery laws in the state. And I believe there are some laws that cover privately owned um, family or yeah. family cemeteries on private land. So that might be a place to check about um, kind of going from there and seeing, yeah. seeing what you might be able to find. Right. Okay. Are there records related specifically to African-Americans or slavery in Ohio? Yes, um, I haven't done a lot of research related to that. I would check um, the uh, Family Search Wiki pages are a good place to check. There's a page specifically for that. Yes, and there's, um, let me see. Well, do you mind if I share my screen for a second? Yes, there's also the National Underground Railroad Freedom Museum. In Ohio as well. So yeah. they're another great resource. Another kind of good resource that we, we might not mention often enough is the African American Gateway. So this is something of ours. I could put a link to it in the chat. But basically what we've done is compiled resources into lists. So there is one for Ohio. So we have a very long list of websites they're all free to access. And then we have this bibliography. So these are books in our department. General is first, kind of just for the whole state. And then it's alphabetical by the county. Now, if you are not local to us and you can't just make a trip, this is still a good bibliography to kind of get started with. So I just wanted to point that out because we I feel like we don't talk about this particular resource often enough because it's really good. It's helpful. Cool. Okay, so uh, the next question, while well, I stick that in the chat, um, some of the old state hospitals slash institutions have long since closed down. 
if we have found one of our relatives in the census as having lived there, is there any way to find the old records for closed places like this? Um, or basically have the records been transferred somewhere or are they just gone? I think it depends on the um, the institution, depends on the hospital. So I would check maybe with the Ohio History Connection first to see um, there might be something there. And then um, I would start checking with local archives, local libraries and university archives, because I think for that, it just depends on the individual individual institution if those records were saved. Yeah. I mean, I know that there are some, because I've, I've done a presentation on this topic before, I know that there are some for Ohio on family search. Uh, it's specifically like a state boys and state girls industrial school. Um, those came from the state archives. So depending on the institution, maybe start local and then go bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Um, my ancestor was born around 1795 in Ohio, possibly Western Reserve. Any recommendation? Any recommended resources for that early of a time frame? They don't know the church affiliation. Um, I would, if there are any newspapers that are available, I would maybe start with newspapers. Um, local county histories can be helpful as well because they might give you some clues about what the area was like at the time and clues about other places that you might be able to look for records. Right. Um, okay. So the next question, do you find that a lot of the Ohio County's vital, vital record and court records on family search are only available at fam at a family history center or in a filial library? Or are the images mostly open for viewing at home? I believe those vital record images should be open for viewing at home. Yeah, I think so. It's hard to tell sometimes because we spend all of our time here. Yeah. And we're in a filial library, so we can open the things. Usually, I haven't, thinking about accessing them at home, I haven't had any issues with accessing death certificates or births on family search when I've used them at home. So I, I think they should be mostly open for viewing at home. Cool. So um, this had to do with, this next question has to do with the Catholic newspapers that you mentioned. Um, what was the other Catholic newspaper you mentioned besides the Catholic Telegraph? And did you mention that there was one for the Toledo Diocese? Um, so on the Catholic News Archive website, there's the Catholic Telegraph for Cincinnati, and then there's the Catholic Columbian, and that was a publication of the Diocese of Columbus. So um, there's not one for Toledo on that particular website, so I'm not sure. Um, I would check with the diocese or on their website um, or on um, newspaper archive, newspapers.com to see. I'm not sure right off the top if there's a publication for the Toledo diocese. Cool. So we got time for a couple more. If we do not get to your question, please send us an email. We're always very happy to answer your questions, but they're always just, they're just, there's just never enough time to answer all of them. So yes, definitely send us an email. And if you would like a copy of the chat, please send us an email. It's genealogy at acpl.info, which I'll stick that in the chat right now. Okay, so... The next question, where would you look for records for orphanages from 1930 to 40? Um, if you are not sure about the name of a specific orphanage, you could try searching in newspapers. If you're, um, if you're looking to try to identify which orphanage it could have been. Um, directories and then too. Directories. Yeah. Um, and then if you're looking for the actual records from those orphanages, um, you could start with the start with the research guide at the Ohio History Connection. You can see what they have 
um, and again, what they don't have. And then, um, so I'd start with them, start again with the bigger organizations and then keep keep scaling it down and going local to see if any local archives or libraries have those orphanage records. And if you are looking for something really specific and you can't find it, send us an email. We might be able to give you some ideas. Okay. Okay, so somebody had asked uh, where you find the Sandmore maps for Cleveland. Yes, so the Library of Congress has many of them digitized on their website. Um, so you can um, you can Google Cleveland Sanborn Maps Library of Congress and it should pop up. And then from there, you can view the various years that are available for that city. Cool. So we are just about out of time. So the final question, which I love, where would I find donated family trees, genealogy research, and manuscripts? Mm, yes, um, we have a lot of great um, donated family research here at the Genealogy Center that's available on our website that you can browse and look at those um, digital files. And I would also, um, I'd search our, our catalog. We have thousands of family histories, so that's a good good place to look and look at your local library and see what, what archival collections that they have as well. Great, awesome. Well, thank you again, Kay, for such an awesome you know, presentation. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Like I said, if you have more questions, please do not hesitate to send us an email. Uh, I just put it in the chat, but it's genealogy at acpl.info. And if you would like a copy of the chat, also send us an email for that as well. All right. Well, I hope all of you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Bye.